The American River Nimbus fish hatchery is full of life right now. During the fall and winter months, salmon and steelhead are spawning, and now is the perfect time to watch fish make their way up the hatchery's fish ladder. The Nimbus fish hatchery is one of the most visited fish hatcheries in the state, and it's completely free. Every year, thousands of people come to watch the spawning process. But at the end of the fish ladder, well, it's the end of the road, at least for salmon. What is going on behind us over here? It might appear a little bit gruesome, but this is how we uh, harvest eggs and milt and, and spawn the salmon for the next generation. When adult salmon are ready to breed, they leave the ocean, head upriver where they were born, and then lay their eggs, then die. This is a mitigation facility. We're trying to supplement the population that's still out in the river. Man-made structures like dams make it extremely difficult for salmon to swim upriver. It's the California Fish and Wildlife's department's job to manage the fish population. And they do that by catching a small number of salmon and steelhead, then growing their eggs in a controlled environment and releasing the babies back into the river. A lot of eggs in there. How many yeah. are we talking? So anywhere from 4,000 to 5,500 eggs. Salmon only produce eggs once in their lifetime and their eggs have to be removed immediately after they're killed. The crew put me to work squeezing sperm out of salmon so I could see how the fertilization process worked. Yeah, there's a lot in there, isn't there? Steelhead are a little different. This fish spawns multiple times in its life, so they're not killed. The eggs and sperm are humanely removed, then the steelhead are returned to the water. These are all baby salmon here? Mm -hmm. right. Millions across. <laughs> Eventually, all those eggs end up in the hatchery's sophisticated fish egg incubators. In about 90 days, they'll hatch, and when they get big enough, they'll be released back into the American River to repeat the cycle all over again. And part of that cycle involves research. When the salmon were released from the Nimbus fish hatchery, a special information tag was implanted in their nose. And so then the hatchery can identify where these fish were raised, how old they are, etc. Austin Galland is a part of the Fish and Wildlife Department survey crew. It's his job to count dead salmon and retrieve as many of those nose implants as possible. It's a very fragrant job. Yeah, yeah, you definitely get used to the odor pretty quick. The data collected from the fish beheadings helps the Department of Fish and Wildlife set a limit on how many salmon fishermen can catch. Why don't you just take the whole fish? Why do you got to cut the heads off? Well, it's a, we get into a lot of fish here, so uh, it's, it's nice to cut off as much weight as we can. Drought and climate change also negatively affects salmon and steelhead populations, and the data collected from both the field surveys and the hatchery helps the overall management of the population. You gotta remember that there's a huge number of these fish that are getting harvested out in the, the ocean. So there's so many pieces of information that we use for, for population management. Yeah, did I get it? All right. It may not be pretty, but the death of a few fish helps the population as a whole. And just in case you're wondering, the dead hatchery fish don't go to waste. Many of them end up at local food banks around the state. From the Nimbus Fish Hatchery along the American River, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads.